There's nothing I can say. A total eclipse of the heart. Out of nothing at all. Turn around, bright eye. Um, uh, let's see. What's on the news today around America and uh, Mr. and Mrs. and the ships at sea? You've heard of blood moons, but how does the upcoming total solar eclipse fit into end times prophecy? Does it fit in at all? Well, joining us to share their insights are Troy Anderson and Pastor Paul Begley. They're co-authors of the new book, Revelation 911. Uh, the book of Revelation intersects with today's headlines. Gentlemen, let's start with Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul, it seems like everyone in North America is interested in this total solar eclipse because the next one won't occur in North America for another 20 years. Is the appearance of this eclipse significant, prophetic, or just another naturally occurring celestial event? Well, this time it's very, I believe, very prophetic in a couple reasons. It's only the eighth total solar eclipse across America since, this, since 1776, uh, but it's in a seven-year period. The fact that it goes over seven cities called Nineveh and one called Jonah makes you wonder, is this our Nineveh moment, America, a time to reflect on where we stand on a lot of issues, our social issues, especially, it seems as if we've, without a question, got away from the, the Word of God and have laws to protect those. So I believe that we really are seeing, just like the Bible said, there'd be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, there'd be distress among nations, and uh, confusion. We see all of that happening right now, Gary. We really believe it is a prophetic moment. Troy, uh, what is the significance then of celestial events? How do they play into end times prophecy? I mean, we've heard about blood moons and now this solar eclipse. Uh, tell nothing I can say. Total eclipse of a heart. Turn around, bright eyes. Yeah. God's magnificent wonder. Astrotheology, y'all. Let's talk about it. You good? You good? You good? You good? Don't stop it. By the so on, so on the Jones show. I'm here. It is the uh, what is it? The evening edition, baby. Come on in. The water is fine. Water is fine. Y'all doing all right out there? Good, good, good. Listen, ah, uh, every time I turn around, I see evangelicals going crazy over something that they see in the sky. If you go to YouTube and type in eclipse prophecy, you're gonna see a whole, whole lot of stuff. Uh, this is me right now. I, I'm live right now. I'm live right now. That's that's me. A whole lot of, especially this one right here, total eclipse. This is prophetic insight concerning the solar eclipse with Bishop Bernard Jordan Larry. Oh, he went there. He went there, y'all. I mean, you you gonna see our brother uh, Marcus Rogers and them. Oh man, the evangelicals are acting a fool. <laughs> they are acting a fool. All right, to the point where I went on YouTube, I spent I spent I spent hours so that you wouldn't have to looking at most of the YouTube videos, uh, websites, Google sites, Wikipedia sites on um, 
the prophetic portion of the eclipse and man was I entertained. Some of it, some of it, I, I literally laughed out loud. I laughed out loud. And some of it, I got a little sad. And because I got sad because I look at those who notice it's the same preachers, the same end time preachers that comes out with these predictions, the same ones. And you never hear from any of uh, the more educated academia men and women out there who, who've, who've got bachelors and masters and PhDs. You don't hear from them doing this. You only hear from the bootleg <laughs> preachers who typically take something like a typical eclipse and turn it into something so eschatological uh, and prophetical that it scares the bejeebas out of you all and my inbox is inundated with people trying to figure out, is the Lord coming tomorrow? That little earthquake on the East Coast a couple of days ago, and I am using emphasis on that little. That little earthquake over there on the East Coast scared the bejeebas out of you folks. And you tied it to this eclipse today. A total eclipse within a, a little area going down you know, from up and, and went down like this. And then 2017, the eclipse went like this. And then what did y'all say? Look at the sword. Look at the cross. And it's going through towns that has biblical names to it. Y'all tied it all together. I'm sick of you people. <laughs> I'm so sick of If y'all would can just read with me, study with me, come to our private Zoom sessions, go to Patreon. And when we try to... Help y'all see that you don't have to be scared. Y'all are already part of the body of Christ. Don't worry. Whatever's going to happen, going to happen. But there's some things that going to happen because it is natural to happen. Come close. Whenever there's an earthquake or some kind of hurricane or some tornado, you Christians always seem, <laughs> Sheldon, you sick them too? You always seem to come up with some kind of biblical reason behind it. The only biblical reason behind these things is that Jesus says that these things will happen in diverse places. And that is not the end, he says. There's more to come. And when he was saying that, he wasn't even talking about today. He was talking about tribulation time. You understand? Sorry to bust your bubbles, but there has been earthquakes and tsunamis and tornadoes and hurricanes for hundreds and hundreds of years. <laughs> and every five, seven, ten years, somebody come out of their closet, out of their bunker and tell you this one here, though, this one here, though, this one here, though. And they keep doing it and keep doing it until because there's a sucker born every minute. And if I hear another blood moon uh, teaching, I'm going to turn my blood. My blood is going to turn. So what I did was I went in, I went up in here because trust me, you all, they're going to forget about this in two days. This thing just happened today. They're going to forget about it in two days. And the next time they bring it up is 20 years from now, because that's the next time we'll see one. And guess what? The fact that we know on the very day that the next one is coming should tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Look, look at this. Let me help. Let me, let me bust your prophetic bubble right quick. Y'all see this? There's a next one coming August 23, 2044. If you are around around that time, get ready for all the prophetic mumbles and the jumbles. Mm -hmm. And then 2045 and then 2052, 2078, 2079, 2099. Like clockwork, they are coming, which tells me that MSNBC are prophets. 
<laughs> MSNBC. Our prophets. Why aren't y'all heralding that, that station as the greatest prophetic station uh, out there? Huh? Hmm? Why don't y'all turn the TV on and bow to MSNBC? Hmm? They just gave you a prophetic word from above. <laughs> they have predicted when the next six, seven uh, eclipses is coming. Why aren't y'all getting excited about it? Huh? 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 And I had a good time on Facebook with it. I had such a good time, y'all. Such a great time. I looked up at the eclipse without my eclipse glasses on, and look what happened to my face. <laughs> oh, I had a good time on the wall. Pitts was there. Who else was there? <coughs> <coughs> Oh, I had a good time. I had a good time, y'all. I had a good time. And see, here, here uh, see that? See that? My neighbors could not see the eclipse because my big head was blocking the sun. <laughs> my, my big head was blocking the sun. So I moved out the way so that my neighbors could see that I had a bright idea. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, 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 I mean, I mean, and then I, 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 that y'all said that it was 93 million miles away. That sun is not that far away because it dropped right into my hands. <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh, I had, I had a great time. I had a great time. I had a great time with the eclipse, the ecliptologist today. And then, and then, uh, you know, you all was buying, uh, y'all was buying, these uh, glasses and on Amazon and y'all was y'all was spending thousands of dollars to get on airplanes and and spending a thousand. The one hotel room was a thousand dollars there in 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 Indianapolis, uh, and, and, and people were just going crazy over these costs. But all I did was put on these glasses, went in the backyard, and uh, and I decided to. I was looking at the thing and I said, you know what? I see the eclipse, but really the eclipse, it's in my heart. <laughs> the eclipse is in my heart. <laughs> and not only is it in my heart, the residue of the eclipse was, was on my beard. The, the, all along, I was looking for it. And I couldn't find it, but it was on my beard. Let me show you to you. The eclipse, all this time, <laughs> was on my beard. <laughs> that thing was on my beard all that time. I'm looking around. I look in the sky. It was nowhere. And all that time I felt the itching in my spirit. So um, so he, here's how it was going here. <laughs> Michelle said, I'm speechless. <laughs> so 2017, 2024, look at that beautiful prophetic sword. <laughs> look at it. Look at it. <laughs> Look at that beautiful prophetic sword. All right. And then uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to show y'all my board because y'all gonna see all my bits before before I get to the bits. I can't show y'all my whole board, but y'all don't saw the board now. All right. And then um here here is uh here's the sun, and this is how it works. This is our atheist friend, Bill Nye, the science guy. He's telling you how it works. The earth. Uh, the moon is not as big as the sun, as many of you know, it's very small, but because it's in the path of the umbrella of the umbra, that is the umbra, it's in the path of it. It seems to be the same size because it's in the path because of the sun rays uh, go down like that. You see, you see how that works? It's I learned this in grammar school. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, okay? So 
Here is a total eclipse in 2017 right here. Here are the towns. And, and this is the one that happened today. Dallas got hit real heavy. And Springfield, so it, right here in the middle is where the where it the sword meets, right there near Evansville, a town that I frequent, I used to frequent a lot, Evansville, right? <clears throat> okay, so I'm I'm taking pictures of all these, and this one really sparked my interest. the The 2017 went through all the towns of Salem, Salem, seven of them, I think they said seven Salem, 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 Salem. It went through seven Salem's. That was your prophetic hint. Guess what? It's a lie. <laughs> it didn't go through all seven Salem's. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. All right. And so then I started taking, I started, I started looking at some of the scriptures that these, these evangelicals was giving me. Okay. <clears throat> and there are right here. Uh, Luke 21, 25, there will be a signs in the sun, moon, and stars on the earth. Nations will be in uh, anguish and perplexities at the roaring and the tossing of the sea. This is what Jesus was saying. And, and yes, he said that thing. I, I put it on the screen for you to see. And then he said this in Matthew 24, 29. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give uh, its uh, light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Let me tell you all something. You will not be around when this happens, all right? But if you keep listening to these guys, you think you will. Unless you have missed the rapture, you ain't going to be around for that. And so what they did was, and I'm glad they did this, Genesis chapter 1. This is what Larry Reed and his prophetic father did. It went right here. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let there, uh, them be this for signs, signs and for seasons, and for days and years, seasons is not what we think seasons is. All right. <clears throat> we look at the Hebrew word and you see Moadim. This brother here got it right. All right. Moadim is the word that you need to see. And what does that is talking about the the, the, the seasons and the, and the festivals times. He's he's right. Here are the festivals, spring feasts and the fall feast. So the spring feast is Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, and Pentecost, or Shavuot. And then here are the feast of trumpets, uh, the day of atonement, and feast of tabernacles. Y'all don't know them by those. You know them more like Yom Kippur and and um, and Sukkot and, and stuff like that. Okay, all right. <clears throat> okay. So when you really dig into these things, you could make the Bible say. Whatever you wanted to say. Paul wrote this letter here in first, uh, first Thessalonians 5. He says, but concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. Okay, see it. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. That is important here because that right there should tell you something. He, the Lord, it's not going to make a whole lot of noise when he comes. He's coming like a thief. So if you think these eclipses are a sign that he's getting ready to come within your lifetime, well, he could. But these eclipses are not a sign that he's getting ready to come because he's coming like a thief. And that is not the rapture. Reference, you all. Jesus never taught or preached or do it, did any sermons on the rapture. No. He did not worry about the rapture because the people in whom he was talking to were Jews. He was talking to a people who he knew was going to go through the tribulation. Why? Because most the Jews who live in Israel today are non-believers. You understand? They are non-believers. They have rejected their brother. Don't bring that Jesus Christ stuff over there because whenever you bring that stuff to an Orthodox Jew, they either going to get very nervous or they're going to cuss you out or they're going to they gonna want to strike you in the face or something because every time somebody brought the name of Jesus to those people, death came to them. What do I mean by that? You Catholics... 
especially through the inquisitions and the crusades and in the witch burnings and all this stuff through history, through eons of time. Every time somebody brought up Jesus, somebody died. You understand? Constantine. You keep naming them. Even the Third Reich of Germany, Hitler, those Episcopal priests uh, in Russia through, uh, with, with Stalin and, and, and Gorbachev and Putin, all right? Every time they bring up Jesus, somebody dies, a group of people. That, uh, they try to annihilate people. They hate Jesus. So when y'all say, I said his name, and that that name brings much power. Yes, that name does bring power, but it also brings death. It brings much death and annihilation to a people. It depends on how you use it. Am I upsetting you all? Did Jesus cry and die again? <laughs> Pits. Huh? Am I upsetting you all? I'm trying to speak the truth, but y'all don't want to hear the truth. And then what, look what he said here. And I... Look, when he opened the sixth seal and behold, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became like blood. That's not happening. You all during your time. If you are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, you will be all right. The rapture will come take you away, and those people got to worry about that time when the sun will be darkened. And those of you who came to our Zoom classes, we taught on the whole book of Revelation. We are going back to that. But those would be paid courses. I'm sorry, y'all. I ain't doing that no more. <laughs> uh, question, do the Orthodox Jews practice most uh, of, or, of uh, all of the Old Testament rituals? A lot of it. Um, believe it or not, Yvonne, or even that's a great question. Uh, what we have in our Bible, the canonized Bible that we have, a lot, of, a lot of the Orthodox Jews don't agree with some of that stuff because they believe a tampering. They have more Mishnah. They have, they have more oral history than we do in what, we have been, what has been transcribed. All right. There's a difference between an interpret, um, a translation and an interpretation. Yes, I was about to say it right, right, first, right, right the first time. Let's put it that way. There's a difference between an interpretation and translation. When you look at different Bibles, like an NLT, ESV, Message Bible, King James, what have you, those are not interpretations. Those are translations because a translation is doing this. So we call those Bible translations. Mm -hmm. The interpretation is, is doing an exegetical move or an eisegetical move, and that is uh, taking what's, what you see in one language and, and then bringing it over and then interpreting it, it to the current language. And sometimes you see what's called tra uh, transliteration, all right? And then we, we'll have to do that teaching. We'll have to do that teaching. That's why I enjoy reading the mid Midrash. Yes, Tam Tamar. Tam, hey, I miss you, girl. I love you. And we're still praying for you. We are. We are. We are. We got to do. I got to get down there when I'm down in that, that area. I'm going to have to break bread with you. Y'all, this is my dear sister for many. Her, sh me and Miles used to fight cat and dogs about the word of God. I mean, we couldn't stand each other's guts. <laughs> Heresy. <laughs> we fought like cats and dogs, man. We couldn't stand each other's guts. And then one day we realized we were saying the same thing <laughs> and the Lord mended our friendship. And we're now, we're not brother. We're not friends as much as we are brothers and sisters. We, I think we got, she might be a Jones. I'm not sure. Or I might be a Miles. I don't know, <laughs> but, but but we are that we're just that type. Um, so it's look at this Zechariah fourteen. It shall come to pass in that day that there will be no light. The lights will diminish, 
It shall be one day which is known to the Lord, neither day or night, but at evening time it shall happen. Look at that. So what is this? This is lead, leading into the millennial. Mm -hmm. Yes, Daniel. Good seeing you, brother. Enoch is, and I, I got to clean these. I got new contacts in, but I got to do something about these. Are they, are, they, are they broken? It's a great resource, although it's not considered candy. Yep. Also, that's the oh, Yes, you're right, brother. I've been telling the folks that I have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so let's see. James Lee is here. What do you say? Judaism doesn't need Christianity. I get it. Never has. I get it. I can't show y'all because it's going to be too big on the screen. They just look at all of the simps who try to tell them about their own culture and their own God. Jews don't know the God that Christians are talking to. Jews just kept on. Uh, Jews. Where am I? Jews don't know. Okay. Jews just kept on practicing their beliefs. Yes. Jews have seen many come in the name of God and claim to be the Messiah, but not one Jesus, including never took the throne of David in Jerusalem. Okay. Until that happens, everybody talking pure crap about <laughs> wasting, <laughs> wasting their time with stories about people. they. <laughs> James Lee, I don't know how to interpret what you just said. I don't know how. Blessed to you, proud Adventist. I enjoy seeing you here. <laughs> I, James Lee, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know if that was a rebuke against me or a rebuke towards the Jews. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know which one it is. Joel says the earth quakes before them. The heavens tremble, tremble. The sun and the moon grow dark and the stars diminish their brightness. Now, I'm taking all of this from many of the YouTube channels that was talking about all of this. All right. And then what did they do? They played the number game. The numbers game. The name game. <laughs> Bernie, Bernie, but Bernie, banana, fanna, for furly, the fee, five, for curly. Bernie. <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> Pamela, Pamela, but Bamla, banana, fama, for family, the fee, five, for Camela. <laughs> Pamela. <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> you, you all, uh, you, you young folks don't know nothing about the name game, okay? And if you ain't careful, you will cuss, all right? <laughs> because if you say Buck, 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 you know, don't. If somebody's name was Buck, you skip that person, <laughs> okay? You skipped them. So these evangelicals is giving us the numbers game seven. Seven, because it was seven years from 2017. Now, hold on. I got to... Let me see now. Let me see. 2017, 2000, 2018, let's see, 2019, carried it one, divided by the COVID-19 virus. Let's, let's see, Obama was gone by that time, so I think we had Donald Trump in the office. It's going to be a while. It's going to be a while. Okay. January 6th happened, and then these people tore up minus... Uh, let's see. We, we, I took the jab once. I had to go back twice, and then they came out with a booster shot. Booster. I spell booster. You don't. You don't spell stuff on this. This is this is the number calculator. Booster shot. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I, oh, uh, so he he gave he paid how much to a porn star? Minus, minus that. And then let's see the. the uh, Congress was in session and the black guy said, our man and our woman. Let's see. The church is open back up. So you got you got you got a minus 10 when the church is open back up. They do the reset. The people went back to shouting. Women took off their clothes again. Prosperity preachers are there now. Brian song carnality. You got to take out 20 for that. Oh my God. Larry Reed. Where's the erase button on here? Erase, slurry, erase, 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 erase. Okay. Biden fell up the stairs on his airplane at least six times. 
so that's seven years, you all. So 2017. Hold on. Sorry. Forgot to carry the one. So, so the name game comes here. And look at this. Right here. Seven is the number of perfection in Scripture. U.S. cities called Salem, 2017. It's the Hebrew year is 577. <laughs> Seven 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 ninety-three eleven. But no, Prince Prince is gone, so I gotta erase. <laughs> I gotta erase. I gotta erase Prince. Okay. So right here, then they really broaden their horizon on this. They really get big on this one right here. Here it is, right here. Seven is the number of perfection in the scripture. Okay, I got that. 77 solar eclipse on Cyrus, Cyrus cycle 145. And then they said 2017 eclipse was the 22nd. Biden is trying to pay off my college student loans. Congress said, heck it to the no, no. So now he's trying to do an executive order. Hope it works out because I need that money. Carry the two. Now, look at this. Here's another scripture, Hebrew chapter 7. And here's where they go, y'all. Here's where they go. Mm. Mm. Here's, where they, here's where they go. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, there it is. <laughs> there it is, y'all. <laughs> Priest of the most high God who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him to whom, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part, being translated king of righteousness, Salem. Y'all see what they did here, right? Y'all saw what they did here. How, how did women do it? Y'all saw what they did here. You got to be black to do that. You got to be a black woman to do it. Wait, did you? Nothing like a black woman, I tell you. All right? So then what they did was they gave us the map. They gave us the map of Salem coming from the east, from, from the west coast all the way down to the east. You understand? And then what they did was they gave us the Ninevites. <laughs> Ninevites. All these cities of Ninevites. The Ninevites. All you people live in Ninevite, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, Texas, New York. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Joyce. I'm sorry. My bad. I was bad at math. Biden fell off his bike. All right. Wow. That's, I can't even count that high. I, I can't even count that high. All right, so then, let's see. Do I see anything else? Oh, Eclipse of America. Eclipse of America, according to Almanac. Here, here's Eclipse of America, according to Almanac, y'all. Almanac. All right? I don't know who Almanac is. <laughs> but Almanac. Right here. Uh, there they go. Okay, you can't see it. There they go. There they go, y'all. There they go. The, go take a snapshot. There it is. There it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Okay, so then what we need to do is we need to go to astronomy because there is a difference, y'all, between astrology and astronomy. And when you go to Larry King, Larry King, Larry Reed show and, and his prophetic father, Jordan, you'll see a mixture of astronomy and astrology, more astrology, though. They talk about the signs and then they make you give some money so that you can benefit from. So Wikipedia uh, says astrology and astronomy were arche archaically, archaically treated together. And as you go down here further, it says the primary goal of astrology is to understand the physics of the universe. Astrologers use ast uh, astronomical calculations for the positions of celestial bodies along the ecliptic and attempt to correlate celestial events. Look at this. Attempt, attempt to correlate celestial, not the 
prophetic woman that's on YouTube who's mad at me right now. With earthly events and human affairs, astronomers consistently use scientific methods, naturalistic presuppositions, and what abstract mathematical reasonings to investigate or explain phenomena in the universe. Astrologers use what? Myst mystical. That's what Reed does. He and his prophetic father use mystical or religious reasoning as well as traditional what folklore symbolisms and superstition blended with mathematical predictions to explain phenomena in the universe. The scientific method is not consist consistently used, but they do it. They do it. April said the super silliness. <laughs> they do it. I'm not, I, I'm not telling y'all to go watch Larry Reed and his prophetic father. I watch it so you don't have to. But if you really want to know some hot mess, go over there, y'all. Go over there. Go over there. Ah. Mm -hmm. Astronomy versus astrology, a constellation of contrasts. Okay. So here's the difference between the two, you all. Astronomy is the branch of science that studies everything outside the Earth's atmosphere. That's really all you need to know. You understand? This includes things in our solar system, such as the sun, moon, planets. It is also included things in, located very far away in outer space. Remember the outer limits, you all? Please stand by. Such as the galaxies, distant stars, black holes. That's what astronomy is. But astrology is a non-scientific practice in which persons use the positions of celestial objects to make conclusions about people or future events. Y'all get it? People who study astrology believe that celestial objects are linked to what? Human behavior. For example, it is common belief in astrology that a person's personality trait aligns with the zodiacal constellation that was in the sky when they were born. So he goes, then comes the horoscopes. If you go over to Larry Reed, you're going to get a lot of that. You're going to get a lot of that. I'm almost done, y'all. I'm almost. I'm almost done. To the point where black folks had a great time with this. Black folks, black folks had a great time with this. As silly as it sounds, y'all, what I'm getting ready to play, as silly as it sounds, might be funny to some, might be ridiculous to others. But let me tell you, there's a lot of truth to this right here, which is one reason why black people can't trust a lot of things. They can't trust it. They don't go to the doctor because they don't trust the doctors because of that whole that whole syphilis thing and, 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 and the abuse and some of that stuff is still going on, by the way, don't think because the syphilis thing happened so long ago. And what's the other woman that they took her DNA and making money and making, making whatever. And she stacks. Is that her name? Okay. All this stuff happened to black folks. Listen, discrimination is still happening in the medical industry still today. Racism is still in, 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 and, and they feel that you all can take pain. This is why they will be more caring and more, you know, sensitive to maybe a white woman that's laying on that bed, bed. But if a black woman lay on that bed, y'all are going to really be, you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer. I'm not saying all hospitals, all doctors do that, but we see too many evidence. And so women just don't, men especially, of a certain age, they ain't going. Henrietta Lacks, yes. That, that's it, that's it. So, again, black folks. Destiny, Dominique, come in here. Hurry up. Listen, we about to have a, a, a eclipse. I need y'all to unplug everything. I don't want nothing plugged up. No TVs, no phones. As a matter of fact, power them phones off. Them iPads, that game, unplug all that shit and sit it on the back porch uh, just in case it explode. Listen, don't run no water in here. Don't open no doors. Keep all the windows closed. What you mean, what it got to do with, with our stuff? You don't know what the eclipse going to bring us. This thing only happen every 400 years or something like that. Ain't it 400? It's 400 years. Yeah, this is a phenomenon. You need to uh, listen to what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. I was in high school. I had an A in science. You got an F, okay? I'm serious now. When it happened, I don't want nobody walking. 
I don't want nobody moving. I want you laying down. You need to lay down and, and pray. Okay? Matter of fact, look in there in the drawer and get my oil out of there. Bring my holy oil. I'm going to uh, cover y'all real quick. What you mean you and your friends had plans on watching it? You don't look up, you don't look up there. You don't look up at the sun. What's wrong with you? Come, come, come close to me real quick and say it again so I can slap you. You don't wear no glasses and look up at the sun. I don't care what the TV told you. They don't know what they talking about. I know what I'm talking about. You don't look at it. <laughs> you see? And let me tell you again, as silly as that sounds, you know, obviously she is, she's playing a part. She's playing the part quite accurately because that was my dear. <laughs> can y'all, can y'all, this is a test. This is a test of the emergency broadcast system. This is only for black folks. If it was raining and the sun was out, can y'all tell me? <laughs> and if, and if it was, if it was raining and the sun was shining bright, can y'all tell me what did that mean? <laughs> Number two, if it was thundering and lightning outside and y'all was inside, or if you was outside, what did my dad tell you to do? <laughs> huh? There you go. The devil was beating his wife. How y'all know that? How y'all know that? <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> that y'all would know that. Black people. <laughs> All right. And if it's thundering and lightning outside, you turned off everything in that house. And then they said, who was speaking? <laughs> huh? Y'all forget that part. Who's speaking? <laughs> you people who are watching the replay, if y'all could just see the comments coming through here. <laughs> if y'all could just see the comments coming through here. <laughs> they got it. God is speaking. <laughs> yep, God is speaking. So this is what this young lady is doing here. This little skit right here. As silly as it sounds, this is what black people believe. This is why when COVID-19 came on the scene, y'all acted a darn fool. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. And then, and I hope YouTube don't take me down. Hope Facebook don't don't take me down. Please don't. <laughs> my hands are already up. I know that I'm, I'm I'm already surrendering to to your will, or oh, gods of YouTube and algorithms. I'm surrendering to your will. Okay. What about five G? <laughs> I forgot. I forgot to add five G in there. Hold on. Five. Five G. They put in towers all throughout the neighborhood. And uh and black people was like, I saw a video of a black two black guys was talking about <laughs> was talking about 5G. And the guy was like, he he had he had his phone and he and he pointed it up to the uh, to uh these were electric, these were <laughs> these were just your typical electric uh wires. That's in your backyards or if y'all, you know, in your alleys, if you have alleys. If you, if you live in New York, I'm sorry, you don't have alleys. All right. Well, some of y'all got some alleys in New York. All right. These are your typical electric lines. And, 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 the, and then <laughs> the guy was doing that and then he saw a tower, a Verizon wireless tower or somebody's tower. And he saw, he saw the tower had been there forever. He said, look, 5G. And he said, <coughs> I can feel it in my chest. How are you feeling, man? You feel it? I, I think I feel something. I feel it in my chest. I think I think they turned them. They turned them five Gs on. <laughs> he was serious as a heart attack. I think I laughed so hard I laughed for three days. He was like, "Oh, oh what's wrong, Billy? Billy, <laughs> Billy, man? Because you know he, he had been in the south here. Billy, man, man, I feel it in my chest. What? I feel a five G in my chest." <laughs> What happened? I think somebody turned the button on. And yeah, come on, Elder McGee. Y2K. Let me tell you, I need to do a show that says when 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 conspiracy theory turns prophetic, <laughs> these same evangelicals and some of you black Pentecostals 
was coming to the churches. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I have got to find that video, Joyce. I have got to find that. Video. He was like, uh, uh. while he was talking normal, he was like, man, they put. Uh, uh. <laughs> I, I feel something. To me. He said, you having a heart attack? No, man. No, somebody turned that. Somebody turned the wire on. What wire? The 5G. I feel it in my. Oh, it's in my back. <laughs> <laughs> so these people, <laughs> Pamela, these people was coming to the churches preaching about Y2K. Airplanes are going to fall from the sky <laughs> and cruise ships are going to be sinking. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. This was the best moment. Stupid as they count today. Okay, wait, what is this? Somebody sent me something. K, what K said? Oh, everyone who looked up got their souls taken, exactly why you, you felt an overwhelming amount of feeling and the want to cry <laughs> and chills. <laughs> they talk, <laughs> they talking about, they're talking about the eclipse. Wait, I got something better for y'all. I got something better for y'all. Uh, uh, Maurice Gregory sent me something. Maurice Gregory sent me something. Lerong. Let me take a snapshot. All right. I took a snapshot. I wonder what it pull up. Uh, let me show y'all something. Live. I'm going to show y'all live. Will it come through? There it is. All right. This dude right here. <laughs> this dude right here. I'm trying to stay in the heart of God and his son. Then watch the lunatic spirit been released to mind of the people to go crazy watching the sun and viewing moon missing the earth earth has an ear he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the church orbit <laughs> i'm having too much fun with this i'm having too much fun with this let me see what you send me let me see let me, let me see if i can send let me see if i can take a snapshot of this right here this one right here. Let me take a snapshot. I'm just showing y'all what people are sending me. All right? I'm just showing y'all. And they serious as a heart attack. All right, come through. Ooh, thank you for coming through. Right here. This is what I just got. <laughs> Everyone who looked up got their souls taken. Exactly why you felt an overwhelming amount of feelings and the want to cry and chills. Did she say, wow, swooped up on humanity? <laughs> <laughs> this this did take place but now but not how you were told if you weren't told the truth you wouldn't look up humans misinterpreting everything it's a genetic disorder fleshly <laughs> and there it is right there y'all <laughs> man listen the freaks come out at night the don't don't do do don't mm, mm, mm. the freaks come out at night. <laughs> you know, they coming out at night. Well, so where was I? Where was I? Oh, so let me play this. Let me play this last thing here. Let me play this last thing here. This is this is this is Justin Peterson. Is that his name? Peter Peterson? I like Justin. Where is it? Where is it? Justin Peters. Yeah. Justin Peters ministry played something here that I thought was uh, uh fascinating. All right. Uh, let me fast forward it. Uh, let me fast forward it. Here it is right here. This sums it up pretty much. Many times to what we have in our modern Bibles today. So this is just absolutely absurd. <laughs> it just the totality, which was only 70 miles wide. Brother Sid, it went over seven cities called Salem. And what did that speak of? It spoke of seven years of peace. And this was, this was seven years ago. On April the 8th, we have the next Great American Eclipse. And it enters Ooh. into a place called Eagle Pass, Texas. And then it crosses over the United States. And as it does, this one, my friend, it makes a kind of an X, which, of course, is <laughs> no, the Tav. In oh. the ancient Hebrew, oh. and that means a prophetic sign. If you look at the two of them together, <laughs> it looks like an X across our nation. So the significance of all of these things uh, tells me that Jesus is coming back soon, and it's a lot sooner than, than, than what you think. So that should also get our attention and that we understand that this is a huge prophetic sign. <laughs> <laughs> that 
<laughs> no. What you just said <laughs> is one of the most insanely idiotic <laughs> things I have ever heard. <laughs> Justin, Justin kills me. All right, now, now, what that wasn't what I want to play, but it sure was interesting. Let me play what I want to play. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, y'all, but y'all did this to yourselves. I didn't come here to make fun of y'all. You did it to yourself. All right, I just got this one in. I just, I, I just get uh, hearken to this one here. All right, breaking news. Breaking news. Look at this. Y'all see this? Now, this is just a globe of the United States. You see that, right? Look what the caption says. How Christians in America viewed end time prophecies. Wow. Wow. That was brought to you by Marshall Keenan Johnson. <laughs> wow. Was that not brilliant or what? We don't even see America in Bible prophecy nowhere, but because the evangelicals live here, they must push something, any hint of any town that sounds like Bethlehem. <laughs> They're going to go there. All right. Now, let me play what, what I want to play right here. Four blood moons prophecies. All you right. will, you'll find this interesting. Here we go. Hey, remember those four blood moons prophecies in the 2010s? John Hagee wrote a best-selling book. There was even a theatrical film. And what happened? Absolutely nothing. Did a single false prophet lose their job after that? And here we are again with another eclipse and more wannabe prophets saying Jesus is coming soon, even though the Bible already says that. Let's just put this to rest right here. Natural solar eclipses are never mentioned in the Bible. They are not prophetic signs of anything. And don't let the YouTube and TikTok prophets tell you otherwise no matter how many millions of views they have. But Gabe, haven't you heard that the great solar eclipse of 2017 passed over seven cities named Salem, which is short for Jerusalem? So what? Jerusalem is in the Middle East, not the United States, and neither that eclipse nor this one are visible there, or by most people on the Earth. But Gabe, haven't you heard that the great solar eclipse of 2024 is going to pass over seven cities named Nineveh? Not true. The total eclipse is going to pass over two cities named Nineveh, <laughs> and it will be partially visible from another five. By the way, the eclipse will be at least partially visible everywhere in the U.S. But Gabe, haven't you heard that both eclipses cross over a town called Rapture, Indiana? No, it's an unincorporated town called Rapture, and the total eclipse was not seen there in 2017, but will be in 2024. And this has no prophetic significance. Again, solar eclipses are naturally occurring. An Ohio newspaper from 1970 reported the eclipse in 2024. We can calculate when they will happen. But Jesus said no one will know the hour or the day of his return. Enjoy an eclipse for the beauty that it is. For Psalm 19.5 says that the sun runs its course with joy as God made the sun and the moon to run like clockwork. This is not a sign of the end. But you do still need to repent and turn to Christ for judgment will come at an hour you do not expect when we understand the text. Preach! That's right. Repent regardless. <laughs> Just be ready when it does happen. No man know the day, know the hour, nor do the son of man knows. So why are you all getting all crazy? You should be encouraged that there is something going on. But the fact that y'all are getting scared that something going on says something. I, I enjoy the eclipse highly. So the reason why I'm doing this show, because this was sent to me. And this is where it basically all came from here this uh, from a couple of days ago. There was an eclipse that took place seven years ago when right across America. There's another eclipse coming right across America. It'll make a perfect cross on the center of the nation. God made the first sign go through seven cities named Salem on August 21st, 2017. The word Salem, according to Bible, is peace. So God is saying seven times he offered peace. The next eclipse is coming. It goes through several cities here, particularly Nineveh. Nineveh, 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 Nineveh. So first we have seven cities called Salem, and now seven cities called Nineveh. Seven and seven. Seven cities called Salem, seven cities called Nineveh, and seven years apart. Right in the center of the cross is a city called Rapture. 
What is God's message? Is coming very, very soon. There was an. And that's the one that got people all, all jacked up. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> it's really easy to fix this stuff. <laughs> It really is. I was supposed to have been posting on Patreon today. I got nothing. I got nothing. So I'm going to double up tomorrow's Patreon posts. So y'all get ready for that. Uh, but um, I had to do the research because you all were getting scared and you all were sending me all kind of messages saying, what, what, should, what should I do? So astro, astro theology, the astro theology comes from the Greek word astron, which means a star. And the word theology, so which that means study of God's word. My 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 bachelor's degree will be in theology and cultural engagement, <clears throat> bachelor of science. Since ancient times, man has worshipped deities associated with the heavenly bodies, the stars, the moons, and the sun. Zechariah one five, and this practice is called astra la tree, astra la tree. You understand? The term astrotheology is more specifically applied to a religious system based on the observation of the observation of the heavens. And this is what Larry Reed and his spiritual father is doing. Okay. Astrotheology. Astrala tree is usually polytheistic while ast astrotheology allows for monotheism. In fact, some people attempt to combine Astro theology with Christianity, which is again what they're doing. So, astralo tree and star worship were common in the Old Testament times. And this is why Reed is, is fascinated over Old Testament stuff and, uh, and especially when it comes to giving money <clears throat> and the Tarun and um, all this stuff. And it was forbidden in the Mosaic Law. The first and the second of the Ten Commandments address idolatry in general, including the worship of images and celestial bodies. You shall have no other God before me. You shall not make, a, 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 the, uh, make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above, not even the form of it. True de theology looks up at the stars, the moon and the sun, sees proof of God's glory and worships him for what he has made. Psalms, what, 19... And one, it does not worship the creation, which Estrella tree does. And it does not view the creation as a symbol of God, which astro theology does. It attempts to twist scripture so that Jesus Christ, instead of being God's son, S-O-N, it's God's son, S-U-N. Y'all understand? <clears throat> and it gets deep. So, Numerous biblical passages link end time events with a astronomical phenomenon, the sun, the moon, and the stars and meteors and, and uh, possibly even eclipses are mentioned in connection with end time by Bible prophecy. When asked about the timing of the end time, Jesus says there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. It's natural that whenever strange or rare astronomical phenomenon occur, Many wonder if the end times are approaching. <clears throat> Eclipses and blood moons seem to especially stroke or stoke end time heresies and, and, and her uh, uh, I would say hysteria. Some point to Matthew 24, which we read earlier, as connecting a solar eclipse with the end time. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, Jesus says, and the moon will not give its light. During a solar eclipse, the sun is significantly darkened and the light normally re uh, reflected by the moon is gone. Also, during a lunar eclipse, the light normally reflected by the moon significantly de decreases. There does seem to be a possible connection between an eclipse at the end of the end time. Yes. With that being said, there is no way to connect a specific eclipse with the fulfillment of end time, especially like today. Eclipses are actually quite common. With a total solar eclipse occurring somewhere 
on the earth approximately every 18 months. So why now? Why in 2017? Why don't we hear from y'all every 18 months? <clears throat> Partial solar eclipses occur several times per year. Total lunar eclipse occurs virtually every year in most parts of the world. Why? It's based off of, <clears throat> why are they acting this way? Because it's based off of the, the picture I just showed you that Marshall sent me with the globe. And all you see in that globe is the United States. That's why we've got this uptick in an interest of Christian nationalism. <clears throat> Since the time that Jesus spoke the words recording in Matthew 24, there have been thousands of total and partial solar and lunar eclipse. None of them seem to have had any significant to end time Bible prophecy. None of them. So there is no way to know a particular eclipse in the future will have a connection to the end time. It's just no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Also, it is important to look at the rest of what Jesus says in Matthew 24, which is known as the Olivet Discord. The possible eclipse is just one of several signs that Jesus mentions. Here is the whole of the verse 29. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. The heavenly bodies will be shaken. People pick up on the dark sun and the moon, but they tend to ignore the stars falling and the planets shaking. Also, Jesus specifies that his sign will come immediately after the distress, which is a reference of abomination of desolation. In verse 15, who was that, you all? He ain't here. Well, he could be here, but he ain't showed his ugly self yet. <clears throat> Actually, I think he's going to be pretty, pretty, pretty cute. Pretty cute. Yes, baby girl, I'm on live. Uh, she must be home or something. This will be a time when there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equaled again. Get it? In fact, so terrible is that time. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. There is no regular eclipse that Jesus speaks of, but one that occurs in the middle of the tribulation with a multitude of other signs. It will be the worst time of trouble the world has ever seen. Y'all understand? Are y'all still with me? GP, are you with me? Tell the folks to just get saved and then wait and ask Jesus. <laughs> Kill me, I love you, man. It is important to remember that Jesus said, no one knows the day or the hour, Matthew 24, 36. Since eclipses can be pinpointed to the very second, it would seem an eclipse cannot be the precise moment of Christ's return. You understand? Our curiosity about when the rapture will occur, who the Antichrist will be, when the tribulation begins, and what exactly the abomination of desolation is must remain unsatisfied for now. Stop looking and searching under rocks for it. It's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. Preach the gospel in season and out of season. Tell your neighbor, tell your friend, and tell your children about Jesus Christ so they can be saved. Then you won't have to be worried so much about your family. The apostle Peter gives in us practical instructions in light of the end time. You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed. It's coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the, in the heat. Second Peter three eleven. We know that we will then see our new creation where righteousness dwells, living our lives like it's golden, living my life like it's golden. In light of Christ's return means living in holiness and, and uh, anti anticipation, trying to calculate the timing of end time events based on astronomical phenomena is not something the Bible calls us to do today. Just keep looking up as Jesus says, you, you are looking up and you 
can see that there's going to be fair weather, but you cannot determine the a time of the season. That it, so that part right there needs to be examined. What was he saying there? He was not talking about the rapture. He was talking to them folks who, who are doing the tribulation. Look up. You got about seven more years. <laughs> he was talking to them. He wasn't talking to you. <laughs> huh? Am I upsetting y'all with, with my, my rants? Hmm? Because this show is over. show is over. Uh, and, and this is your, your, your brain on drugs. <laughs> Any questions? Huh? Y'all done with me? Hmm? Y'all not coming back no more? Y'all don't want to come back no more? Hmm? Y'all going to leave me? It's about 600 people here. And I am done. Uh-oh. Wrong. That, that's my cuss button. Just in case I get, just in case the devil is sitting right here and an angel is sitting here <laughs> and the angel is having, having breakfast, turning around, having breakfast and the devil is turning to my face and want me to say something because, you know, sometimes the people in the comment section act, act <laughs> and so I have to, <laughs> sometimes I take heed <laughs> to this food right here. <laughs> All right, y'all. I got to go. God, thank you for your people who are here. They are my family. I love them. Laughter does good like medicine. It's, it's like healing to the soul. God, you put that in us so that we all can just laugh together. Some people have claimed healing because they laughed. Not the heresy of the laughing anointed these churches that are laughing hysterically in these churches are falling out that right there is just demonic <laughs> but to talk with the saints and have a good time and laughter those first three that's part of the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace and that's something you gave us all <laughs> so god i thank you for it it show sure feels good. Help those people to see the word, hide it in their hearts, and all these teachings out there all over the United States about the blood moons and the eclipse and what have you. Listen, we're going to put our hands over our ears and just lie, lie, lie through it all, and it'll be all over in the next 48 hours. It'll be all over, and we'll, they'll be talking about something else, setting their clocks and watches to some other heretical teaching meanwhile we are going to continue to preach the gospel on this show here so that somebody might get to know you so then whenever you decide to come whenever your father say get ready we'll all be ready thank you god and we love you in jesus name amen and amen all right y'all thank you patricia thank you for that and those of you who, uh, who, who whoever uh, of you <laughs> who were given to the cash app and through PayPal and to Zelle and through all these other ways. Thank y'all for supporting us because it comes in handy. We ain't rich. <laughs> I'm wealthy with my friends. I am probably one of the most wealthiest men on earth because I have the bunkers. And all these other content creators want the bunkers. They cannot have them. <laughs> you understand? They cannot have them. God gave us to each other. I belong to you, you belong to me, and I am because we are Bunker Fest. <laughs> That's what we do. We love each other, uh, each other. And all, even my brothers, wish they had the bunkers. They can't have them. Elder Rodney Jones, you can't have them. Larry Jones from Stock Up, you can't have the bunkers. We are family. <laughs> I got all my bunkers with me. All right, y'all, take care of yourselves. I, I think I closed about three times already. I must be cogent. I got to go record some videos on Patreon.com. So on the Joe Show, go to the collections and have your way. <laughs> go to collections and just have your way. And I'll put up some videos for tomorrow, right? I'll put up something for Morning Manor in the morning. And then I'll do some uh, stock reports in the finance room. And then I'll put something in the, in the Bible study upper room tomorrow. All right? So... Get ready. Bunker ship. Come on. I love it. <laughs> Melody, I love it. Take care. Uh, let me go see what my uh, baby girl doing upstairs. 
I already ate, so I want some ice cream. I've been wanting some ice cream for so long that I got some upstairs and I went, I, I literally drove to Walmart almost at 11 o'clock at night last night just to get a box of ice cream cones. <laughs> That's how bad I wanted it. I drove way, way down the way to get a box of ice cream cones. I got my box of ice cream cones. I'm finna go upstairs and eat my cookies and cream. It's the best thing that God has ever made in dairy history. Cookies and cream, rainbow sherbet. Those two right there. Four Women That Men Desire by Sir Walter Jones is a women's guide to men. The authors endeavor to expose men fundamentally with his perspective on the types of women that men truly desire. He has meticulously penned a brilliant and controversial read, bold in its assertion that all women fall into one of four categories. Girl A, the side chick. Girl B, the mistress. Girl C, his soulmate. Or Girl D, his fatal attraction. And when a woman walks into a room, her category is showing. The Four Women That Men Desire is funny, informative, and enlightening. It is a quick read and a must-have for your library. Head over to Amazon.com for your copy. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? 